Howdy, y'all. It's your boy, Big Country. I'm a tech sales recruiter, and I've gotten more people hired than Christopher Columbus. Today, I found a little article called, Here are the Six Fatal LinkedIn Mistakes that are Costing You Jobs. And I thought this might be interesting because I'm over here hating on people's LinkedIn profiles all the time. And if you have been applying to jobs, looking for them on LinkedIn for a while, uh, realize that you're putting yourself out there publicly. And especially if you're going to be in my kind of game, tech sales, a lot of these conversations and a lot of what you will be doing or have been doing might be taking place on LinkedIn. So it's important that your LinkedIn profile is crisp if you are to get hired. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I will be reacting to this article featured here by the Daily Mail. Let's take a look. Let's check. So don't refer to yourself in the third person. Okay. So basically any time where you're saying rather than I have achieved blankety blank and I have all this experience with whatnot, here you go, you put in Rob or something like that. Um, they're over here saying that that's costing you jobs. Personally, I disagree. I do see this frequently and I do think it is corny. I think it's one of those things where you're implicitly trying to communicate with the world that uh, you're a big baller and you're, you know, you've paid somebody to do your LinkedIn profile for you. So I think that can be cute. Maybe if you're an executive or something like that, if you're anything below that. Yeah, I think this is corny. Will me as a recruiter not hit you up because you refer to yourself in the third person? No, I think it's, I think it's just whatever. I think this is cap. All right, don't write too much in your about section. The first two lines, your about section above your activity and skills. Um, you got to have this enthusiastic sales professional description needs to be simple, punching to the point. Um, so I agree and disagree. I think that there are times where people put way too much irrelevant stuff in their about section, like, oh, I'm a girl dad, or I'm a mediocre golf player, or, you know, I have children. That's basically what I see that I think is corny. Or I love dogs. Everybody loves freaking dogs. You don't need to let me know. Um, but uh, me personally, whenever I'm looking at somebody's LinkedIn profile and I'm thinking about potentially hitting them up for a job that I'm trying to fill, um, I'm going to read this. And, um, I like when people put like a story about themselves. So, you know, that helps inform me way more before I start talking to somebody. I think maybe for high volume recruiters, um, who are just sifting through resumes all day, every day, looking at LinkedIn profiles, this might be a thing, but. Uh, most of what I'm doing is going out and trying to hunt down people that I would like for a job. And uh, I tend to err on the side. I, I like to read and I like people who can elaborate upon themselves. But uh, I think there's some meat here. If you're going to be saying a, a little bit at a time, uh, something short and snappy, maybe at the top with, hey, read a little bit more down below with a finger emoji. You got to put the emojis in there. Go ahead and hit that read more thing. I think that that would be a cute way to do it. Next one, uh, third one. So don't put skills for your current job. The old adage, dress for the job you want, not the one you have. Uh, skills, you improve. Yeah. There's a role you're aiming for in an industry that you want to break into. Your profile should reflect that. Um, so I agree with this. If you are either unemployed or if you are in a current job that... Um, doesn't care about your LinkedIn presence. Why do I say that? Um, you know, when I used to recruit, I do it from time to time, but looking for entry level salespeople, industry switchers, things like that. Let's say you're a bartender or you are a teacher, another really common one. You have a LinkedIn profile, but you've made a decision that you want to go into a different industry. What you should put on your headline uh, and that kind of thing is like, you know, I'm an old teacher who's breaking into tech sales or focused on, you know, landing a BDR, SDR job. You say that and then you will wipe away a lot of the concerns about why did this teacher apply to my job? Like if you're if you're a teacher and your headline says, you know, passionate educator and you don't say, oh, I'm trying to get into tech sales. I'm going to be like, well, you just applied to a job because you needed a job. Um, you know, I'm not interested in that. But you know, for somebody who's doing more outbound recruiting or headhunting, if I see somebody who says, uh, yo, I am a teacher, I'm a hospitality person, I'm a personal trainer, but I'm trying to get into tech sales on their headline, on their about section, I'm hitting you up. So this is some facts. 
Um, don't hide gaps in your employment. I Okay, this I totally agree with. Um, lots of people don't want to talk to folks who have been gappy for a long time. LinkedIn does have this thing where you can put in career break. And I highly encourage folks, if it's not something super personal, um, go ahead and add those in to any major gaps. You know, if it's been like one month between one job and another, uh, if you've been in that first job for a while, maybe not something to worry about so much. But I think, um, you know, I, I really get tripped up when I hit somebody up, uh, I set up a call with them, and then I find out on the call that like through my scanning of their LinkedIn profile on the original thing that they actually started another job a year after they did. Um, and then they just tell me about what they've done for work. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Can you explain what this gap was and all that? It makes me super uncomfortable and it makes hiring managers uncomfortable. So the more upfront you can be about that kind of thing, you know, I'd say like, hey, if you took time off because you had a kid, if you had a medical issue, if you just had a long series of work and you made a whole bunch of money and wanted to take time off to travel, or if you started a business that just didn't go off the, that went off there good, then go ahead and put that in there. Um, that, it just reduces the red flags and it puts the viewer's mind at ease real soon. So this is a great tip. I'm sure you have a good photo and background picture. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a given. Um, I always tell folks, if you are going to not be smiling, you're not going to be dialing. You know, if you're trying to get into tech sales, nobody wants to talk to the people like the way that you look in your picture uh, is probably 50 percent of whether I want to talk to you or not. And that's not because, you know, like, I don't I mean, if you're really ugly, you do what you will about that. There's AI that can help out with that. But if, uh, yeah, you got to smile, you got to have on some decent looking business casual clothes at least and have some depth. Do not be having somebody taking a picture, you know, two feet away from your face with your back against a wall and your head's casting a shadow. That looks dumpy. Don't do that. So, yeah, this one's a given, y'all. The next one, adjust who can see your profile. Okay. Forget their connections can see the changes that they've made. Um. So, yeah, this is kind of simple. Um, if you don't allow your picture on public profile, you just look like you're not on LinkedIn and you look like you don't want to talk to anybody. And you also just look kind of cagey and like you're not open to have recruiters hit you up. If you want recruiters to hit you up or if you want recruiters to take you seriously, make your profile visible at least to recruiters because, I mean, otherwise it's just going to look like you probably don't exist or you're not on LinkedIn enough to make you worth even messaging. It looks like that's it. So if uh, if you found this video helpful or if you would like to see some more stuff from Big Country um, or if you have any other tips or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment box below. Leave me a like and regardless of what media that you were looking at me on, go ahead and subscribe or follow or do that kind of thing to me. This has been Big Country. Stay blessed out there, y'all. Peace out.